How are we doing? Should we go for it? I think we can get started. Why not? The recording has started, so let's get let's get cracking. Hello, welcome everybody to the WP 6.2 live demo outline. I'm um, Nathan Wrigley. I do a few things around the WordPress community, mainly to do with video and podcasting and things like that. But it's not about me. Uh, today, we've got two fabulous guests. We've got Anne McCarthy and Rich Tabor, and they're going to do a full-on product demo. It's a little bit unlike things that you may have seen, because in the in the more recent past, lots of new features have been added. And so Rich and Anne are going to spend the time on the screen in a moment, and they're going to show you all of the bits and pieces that you may find dropping into a WordPress install near you, let's hope. There's been a lot that's been happening, so there really will be probably 20 or 30 minutes of live demo, so look forward to that. I've got to get them to introduce themselves in a couple of moments. Just before that, though, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this is going to be recorded, so if you have to drop out halfway through and go elsewhere, completely fine. It's going to be posted at the Make Core. Uh, website, but it will also come fully complete with a transcript as well. So if that's um, something that you're looking for, that will all be there. Also to say that if you want to post any questions, we'd love that. In fact, there's a whole portion at the end when Rich and Anna finish speaking, where we're going to field questions toward them. Now, there's really two places to do that. If you're live with us on Zoom, then if you hit the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and post your questions in there, I guess specificity, specific, whatever that word is, be specific. Um, help us out. Tell us exactly what you want to know and we'll get the questions to them. The other way to do that is to go into Slack and there is a channel in there, hashtag walkthrough. And if you want to post any questions in there as well, that would be great. So yeah, just to recap, Q&A button if you're in Zoom and use the Slack hashtag walkthrough channel if you are in the Making WordPress Slack. Okay, right. I think we'll take you guys one at a time, if that's all right. Uh, first off, a little bit of an introduction from both of you. Let's begin with, with Anne McCarthy, shall we? Hello, Anne. Hello, hello. It's so good to be back on literally any sort of live stream with you. Um, oh, I appreciate you. that you're a yeah. part of this. Yeah, yeah that's so really I'm nice. Anne McCarthy. Um, I'm a product wrangler. At Automatic. I live in Seattle. Um, I also run the FSC outreach program, which is basically dedicated to testing a lot of the latest and greatest with WordPress, um, which is part of why I'm so excited to be a part of this demo is because so much neat stuff has come um, through this that I've had um, the privilege of going through a little bit early um, with the outreach program calls for testing. So uh, that's a little bit about me. I'll pop it over to Rich. Yeah. So Rich, if you want to take the baton there. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Rich Tabor. I'm a product manager at Automatic, and uh, I work on WordPress and Gutenberg uh, in particular uh, from a little bit south of Atlanta, Georgia in the U.S., and uh, I've been building and tinkering with WordPress for, I think, close to 11 years now. So it's a, it's been a good run, and I'm super stoked about where uh, things are heading. Yeah, and things definitely have been moving in a very much a forward direction. WordPress 6.1 and WordPress 6.2, there's so much clear blue sky between the two of them i think probably the best thing at this point is if we can have it i don't know what, whose screen is coming on i think it might be rich's or maybe it's hands i don't yeah. know if we can get that screen shared then i will slide my way out of this call and <laughs> and say rich and Anne, it's it's over to you i'll be back as soon as you finished for any q and a's awesome awesome thank you all right everybody can see my screen right yeah? yes Rich did an excellent job designing this. I do want to call this out that I love, uh, absolutely love this. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Anne. Yeah, this is, is actually running 2023, so it's kind of showcasing some of the, the things you can do just with the, the core theme and uh, some of the design tooling that we've are, that is being built into 6.2. So this view here is the site editor. So I'm going to orient you here. Um, there's one big change here in particular I want to call out uh, visually is this idea of the frame here on the right. And this will pull up the local template. So I'm lo looking at my homepage of the site right now. If I navigate into other templates, I can pull those up here on the right as well. And then you can also navigate template parts. So this, this part's not very uh, new to 6.2, but the idea of, of zooming in on different template parts and templates and having them appear here in the frame is. And that's important because of this concept of browse mode. And this is where you could 
dive into an actual page uh, from the site editor. So here I just pulled up the about page of the site and I can click into it and actually start making changes. Now the changes here within the post content block are going to be relative to this about page, but I can also modify the template, which then changes the about or changes the page on uh, any instance of this uh, particular template. So it's a, it's a new concept on how we can browse the site, uh, but it's a very powerful uh, and it, really the first iteration of that way of uh, managing a site. And also lightly introduced content editing in the site editor, as you mentioned. So it's a kind of a neat yeah. merging of the two worlds, which I know folks have long been wanting to see that uh, unified. And same with the frame, it kind of adds a nice layer where instead of just being dropped in, like before you kind of are given a more zoomed out view, which I think helps address a lot of the feedback that we saw around the orientation when you're entering the site editor. Yeah, exactly. And really, if we think a little bit further out than 6.2, this could also house settings views. Uh, so we do have you know, one, one view here that, that is relative to 6.1, where you can see all of your different templates. But imagine if we had any other different types of settings and controls and different pages loaded within here. It doesn't have to be just the front end uh, templates and, and renders mm -hmm. of your site. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to dive into this here. So you can go into it just by clicking on the frame. I'll do that one more time just to show. You just click on it, and now you're entered right into it. You can edit it right off so we can make changes uh, just as if we zoomed into it uh, in the other way in 6.1. And then we have a bunch of styling tools that have been added to 6.2. So I want to kind of hone in on these. Like this panel itself is not new. Uh, we have um, styles, style variations. You can zoom in here. We've got this new zoomed out view where you can apply different ones at a time. And then we also have uh, this icon here, which triggers the style book. Now, the style book is a, is a very uh, interesting tool here that really lets you uh, customize the themes style guide, essentially. So I can go through each of these tabs, which are relative to the block categories, and see all of the blocks loaded on this particular um, site. So right here, I've got like the button blocks and a columns block and whatnot. So if I click on one of these, it'll pull up the style panel of that particular block. And then when I make changes over here, these are applied globally throughout my entire site. So if I want to change the way this button looks, let's say we do some smaller text. Maybe we'll add a little bit of letter spacing and maybe make it capitalized. You see, it's getting applied everywhere that the button is used. Also do some changes here to padding, perhaps. Maybe we'll do something custom here. I think that looks nice. And now and again, while, these are while you're oh, real ahead. quick while you're doing this, I wanted to note that like this is something that um, folks have really struggled with for use of the site editor. Where if you're editing a block that isn't in the template already, you're not able to see this. So as Rich is showing, you can actually look at any block that's being used under the theme and see how the changes you're making in styles will impact that. Where before, if the block wasn't present in the template that you were editing, it was hard to know exactly what was happening. And so now you have both the style book and this inline preview that you see. Um, in the style section to rely upon, which is pretty neat. Yeah, exactly. And, and really, you could um, theoretically go in and design your entire theme with the style book. Um, now, I know there's some there's some advantage to designing it in context of pages and whatnot, and I'll go into that in a bit. But the idea is that you really can quickly browse through all of the different blocks and, and tighten up what you want to within these controls. And it's not limited <clears throat> to the standard uh, variation as well. There's also these style variations of each block that you can now uh, manipulate as well. So we're going to go in, let's say we'll change the, the radius of this one. So we want it to be sharp like our other button, uh, but we have these new controls. Like this is a shadow control we've added uh, in 6.2, where you can apply, say like this shadow here might be nice, this one here. And there's some fallback shadows uh, within core that a theme can provide as well, its own values. But uh, this now will apply for every single variation of the outline on my site here. And uh, you'll notice that it's not in the style book right now, and that's just part of the future feature development is showing the variations of blocks as well. Exactly. Yes, I would imagine that this would this would show up uh, the variations mm -hmm. of the button block. Yeah, uh, which is a nice way to to really customize these. Like it used to be, only CSS would would be used to to manipulate these uh, variations here, and now it kind of abstracts that away, and you can do it within the the editing experience. It's really nice. It really is. There's also this idea of block CSS. So you can add custom CSS that is scoped to a particular block. So if I add CSS here, it'll be applied 
uh, for the button block wherever it's used. Now, I wouldn't recommend using additional CSS um, in most cases. I would I would suggest using all the different uh, controls that we've built that are built into 6.2. But the idea of using CSS to add a little pizzazz um, to this particular button block um, is, is fine, um, but just with that caveat that you wouldn't want to use it um, exclusively. Like I wouldn't apply a, a background color via CSS. I would rather use uh, the background elements color here. There's also additional CSS, uh, which emulates what was uh, previously in the customizer. So we do have site-wide CSS uh, that can be applied uh, within the site editor and also on the front end of your site. Again, I wouldn't emphasize using this uh, exclusively uh, as there are a lot of new design tools that I would explore first uh, from the top level uh, styles here where you can apply colors to the background text and buttons. Uh, but if there was anything uh, extra you wanted to add, um, you could do so within the, the style sheet here. And I'll note, we'd love to hear feedback if there are certain things that you're repeatedly adding custom CSS for. Um, so either commenting on a currently open issue or if you don't find one, um, opening an issue would be super helpful because it's neat to see what folks are using for CSS so we can fill those gaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the, the global style panel here, but there are some quite a few other improvements um, along styling. So the first is the idea of pushing styles globally. So if I'm in here and I'm designing, let's say I want to add a radius, I want to do um, some different typography. Let's do appearance. I like this like bold italic look. And then we'll also, cool. thanks, we'll also maybe make the letter spacing. Maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger actually. And then um, I think that'll work. You can do these changes here and see I've just styled this one particular block, this button up here, and this button down here is still using the global styles that we designed earlier. But now I can go through my settings panel here and hit apply globally and I'll go down here so we can see it happen. The styles are now pushed globally to all the other blocks. So this is it's really helpful for when you're designing in flow and you, and you don't necessarily want to abstract out into the style book and you want to push your changes that you just did here uh, because you like the way the button looks and you want those applied everywhere um, all at once. This is a really powerful way to, to quickly design uh, within the editor. Another tool that is quite useful, and I'm going to take this uh, heading here and manipulate this. It's the idea of copying and pasting styling. So we're going to use that same bold italic look. Maybe we'll make that a little smaller. We can even manipulate this size a little bit bigger. Now we go here to copy styles, and then I can come all the way down here to this other heading that's very similar and paste it in. And there we have that style applied just to these two uh, headers. And you would do this uh, when you don't necessarily want every single heading to have this effect, uh, but perhaps there are like elements on this page that you want to uh, push those changes to. Um, specifically. So copy and pasting allows you to be very granular, whereas uh, applying styling globally lets you um, be more of a holistic design experience uh, for pushing styles. Another neat... Yeah, it's... <clears throat> oh, go ahead. oh, real quick. I just wanted to know, like, I think one of the things that's interesting is as we've added more design options to blocks, like this is part of the experience of scaling things and making it easier to use. So we think about like intuitive and delightful some of these tools coming into 6.2 really take, you know, the tons of um, design tools that we've added over the last couple of releases and makes it easy so you can actually tweak things and then reuse. So I think that's one of the things I want to call out is it's kind of this crescendo um, where now the tools that are coming to 6.2 um, really ease the experience and allow you to do a lot of neat stuff where rather than having to <laughs> retweak everything through every single heading block, um, a lot of stuff is eased, so. Yeah, exactly. WordPress is, is moving towards a design tool and less of um like a, what you see is what you can only have. It's more of a, mm -hmm. an expression of creativity and it really does open up the, the doors for, for designing beautiful you know, pages on the web. I think it's really um, powerful. All right, another cool bit that we've added is the idea of sticky positioning. So headers um, would be nice sometimes if they stick to the top. So for top level group blocks, this is a group block here. There's this new position um, attribute where you can assign it to sticky. And as you can see right in the editor, it's already um, showing me that this is sticky on the front end and also here as well. 
Um, it's only available for top level blocks for now. There's, there's still some, some odd stuff to figure out on how we communicate when something is not um, not going to stick due to the, the parent height of the elements around it. Um, but for top level, it's, uh, it's still fine. So we have it here, but there are some uh, iterations that are already happening for the next uh, release that will kind of bring this into more, um, bring some more capabilities to this particular feature. Yeah, and I'm very excited because uh, one of the things I wanted to briefly call out was the how the header, um, the template part has that purple. So another um, neat thing coming to this release that was a big part of feedback for the outreach program um, was having template parts and reusable blocks having a different coloring because there are different kinds of blocks that are synced across the site um, when you make global changes um, and impacts everything everywhere. So that's another neat thing that's coming with this release um, is that you can kind of see those a bit differently in the list view as well as when you're in the editor. I see Nathan has his hand raised. Is that um, intentional? <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> sure. Oh, it's removed. Okay. It, it was going, not sorry. intentional. That's <laughs> my mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it helps you see quickly too, like what is a template part, uh, in particular for headers and footers. It makes it easier to, mm -hmm. to browse quickly. Yeah. So speaking of template parts uh, and patterns in particular, so headers and footers um, are new patterns added within WordPress uh, 6.2. And they're loaded actually from the pattern directory, which is kind of neat. And um, I'm going to show you how to replace a footer with one of those other patterns. So, so if you have your footer template part selected, you can go up to replace footer. Now, this flow is not new to 6.2, but it's um, going to call out these other improvements. And then you just click one there, and you have it uh, loaded here. That's the site logo that I'm using up here as well. And you can modify this text uh, without having to do any, any funky PHP filters or removing actual templates. Um, and if you want to change it again, you go back to replace. Uh, let's say, let's pick this other one. Let's try this one. It's kind of nice. And um, we have, there's this focus view where you can zoom in to just the footer itself. You can even check the responsiveness of it and see how it uh, how it reacts on mobile. And make any of your changes here and have those uh, persist over to the actual template whenever you close it out. It's a nice way to, to really kind of clean up the editing experience so you're not seeing this entire uh, group of groups and instead kind of focus in on what you're actually wanting to, to complete. You can do the same for the header as well. Yeah, and as Rich mentioned, there are some new patterns that are being bundled um, from the director, which I think are, are really exciting. So regardless of what theme you're using, there's gonna be some pattern through patterns that help democratize design um, where you can use them in any theme. Yes, that's all right. All right. So navigation. Navigation has uh, gone underway uh, quite a bit of, of work in the last a couple of months. And, and really, this is all about trying to make it easier to manage your, your site's navigation and also add pages and links and then even styling. So there's this new dedicated list view for the navigation block. Um, so it's, it's essentially emulating a little bit of what's available over here, except for you had to kind of get down to it. Now it brings it top uh, top of mind in the surface area here. You can drag them around, move them up and down, even add submenu links and remove them as well. And then you can style it like normal and now uh, apply uh, different styles via the styles tab to the block itself or even individual uh, page links and whatnot. You can dive into them and manage them all from here instead of having to only uh, manage them from up here. This really kind of abstracts the complexity from, from this particular Canvas interface into a more familiar um, interface here on the sidebar. Um, it's, it's really a, a great effort and it is, you know, it's taken some time to refine, but it's, um, it, it's getting there and it feels a lot nicer. Yeah, there's been a lot of good feedback about this as well, just because it, it kind of is meant to marry the, the classic experience with bringing blocks into it. So um, it is an addition to being edited on, editing on Canvas. So if you really want to continue to edit <laughs> as an edit block, um, you know, you're used mm -hmm. to, you can continue to do that. Um, but it does add a nice interface um, in the block settings where you're able to do it. And oh, I'll briefly call out here the split settings, which we'll probably talk about later. Um, but you'll see here for more complex blocks, there's some nice split settings making it a little bit easier, more intuitive to go through. Yeah, that's right. And if you take a look at navigation here, this is very similar to this component added here. 
And, um, and that's, not, that's purposeful. We want it to, to look and feel uh, familiar uh, either way you're managing your navigation. So you can also um, add submenu items here, remove them and drag them around and reset them here, as well as browse into the individual pages. All right, so that's what I have for the site editor portion of the demo. And um, did you have anything else you wanted to add to this, uh, Anne? Uh, could you resize the browse mode frame? I just love the resizing. I think it's kind of oh, cool. Yeah. This is just like a fun, you know, thing to call out, but maybe you won't notice, but um, you can resize it. So as you're quickly going through your site, if you want to see how it looks in different ways, you can also do that. So that's the final thing I'll, I'll shout yeah. out. Yeah. So then, yeah, exactly. It's there's a lot of fine fine touches like that. Well, we can't obviously can't call them all out today, um, yeah. but it is uh, it is it is really getting tightened up um, overall as a, as an editing experience uh, for the site. It's such right, a so. great foundation for the future, for sure. Exactly, exactly. All right, so if we press this uh, back button here, it goes right back to the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and leave. And that back button was a big piece of feedback that people had. They would get into the site editor and not know how to get back out. So I appreciate you calling that out. Yeah, exactly. It, it's been through a number of iterations, and I think we have settled on something that that feels feels nice and does feel nice. I agree. Uh, so ah, yes, the removal of the bay yeah. label. <laughs> you want to do you want to talk to this, Anne? <laughs> Yeah, I would love to jump in on this actually. Um, so you'll notice that the Bay label is removed for this release. And um, part of why we wanted to show it now is to see how all the features, how the experience has changed, how much more you can do. Um, and all that has led to the removal of the Bay label. And that doesn't mean <laughs> the feature development is done, that it's like, you know, gonna stay this way forever. It just means that it's in a place where we invite you all to try the site editor. Um, it is out of beta and a lot of um, development and work has gone into testing this. So we've had almost, I think 20 calls for testing with the outreach program. Um, it's been through multiple major WordPress release cycles. There is still more work to be done, um, but I'm very excited to see the Bailey will move. I think the features that are coming to 6.2 and the foundation that is set with 6.2 um, really marks a level of maturity um, that is pretty exciting. So consider this an invitation to try out modern WordPress and um, to check it out. 100%, <laughs> couldn't have said it better. <laughs> All right, so another neat part that's added recently uh, for 6.2 is this idea of distraction-free mode. Um, so it's not turned on by default, but I have it on so we can see the, the results here. Um, so you can go in and type right here, build, and then actually I'm gonna throw in some lorem here so we can see it in action. So this feels, more like a text editor and less like uh, a block editor whenever distraction free mode is on even the the multi block selection it feels really nice it doesn't there's not this idea of blocks even it's kind of abstracted from here there's less noise it's less distraction and uh, it's just I think the, the idea is that it's it's just you and your words it's just writing and publishing and if you want to publish you, you hover over here you'll see the toolbar come down you can hit publish or draft and then this is how you would turn it off and back on right here. And then you still have control of all the existing tool and it's just a, a much simpler streamlined uh, interface. And you do have access to blocks. You can still um, add them if you'd like to, but the idea is just um, being able to write without the distractions is really powerful and a really um, nice publishing experience overall. And this is for everyone. So this is like a lot of stuff we're from the site editor using a block theme. Um, this is um, available for anyone who's using the block editor. And to be honest, I use this for basically all my writing now, um, as especially for any post or, or page, I typically will go into this mode. So I'm very excited about this and I hope folks feel the same way. Yeah, exactly. I, I've been using it too for quite a bit. Um, but the thing is, it's also not only for post editing. So I have a, a page here that I've created and I have distraction-free mode turned on, uh, which kind of uh, removes all the, the extraneous tooling and really lets me focus in on the actual blocks here. So I can you know, manipulate them to an extent. I can even drop in different imagery for these images here and modify the buttons um, and, and whatnot, and even add more blocks. But the idea is it's almost like a, a simplified editing experience for pages as well, not only for post. And here mm -hmm. I'll come up here and 
turn off distraction free mode to see it all in real time. And this isn't yet available for the site editor, but I have a feeling a number of folks are going to be um, keen to see that put in there as well. Exactly. Yeah, I don't see why why it wouldn't uh, work in the site editor as well. I think it'd be very nice. Yeah. All right. So we have some other improvements here that are fun. Um, so this inserter here has gotten a, a couple of changes here. So blocks looks familiar. Um, it's still the same, but patterns is where we start seeing some changes. Instead of having um, some featured patterns loaded and a block category selector, we've split them out individually as their categories here. And I'm going to load up some of the different header patterns that are loaded in uh, WordPress 6.2. So you can load them here and see them in this tray and then click to add them to your site, and which is really nice. It's a nice way to kind of go through them quickly and see a bunch of different ones. We also have the media tab up here, which is new. Uh, which splits out uh, the images from your media library, videos, and audio as well, including uh, the Openverse library. So this is a catalog of, I believe, over 600 million free um, openly licensed stock imagery. And you could search from it right here in the inserter. So let's type in birds and click on one, and it will add an image block with the image uh, already added to it. We have got the caption down here. If you don't want the caption, you just turn it off right here, this little control that was added. And, and now you can manipulate it uh, right off. So let's say, let's drop it into here. Maybe we'll make these about the same size and move it over, do something interesting. And, and I'll note that our... there was a GDPR concern around the images being properly uploaded rather than hot linked. And I wanted to just note that that's been um, addressed. So the images are uploaded to your media library. Um, exactly. as well so in case anyone has that question <laughs> sorry continue yeah no that's that's a good point um it's very important the the key and a key benefit too of of this flow here is that instead of instead of having to add an image block and then open your media library and then pick an image and then you have it here it's really it's really this one flow of searching visually and, and searching here as well, and then having it added as an image block already. So kind of skipping all the, the extra steps that you always have to do anyhow. Um, it's really, mm -hmm. it's really, it's really nice. And we have a couple of interface changes. So there's the settings icon up here that used to be a cog, and now it represents uh, the sidebar itself. So when you open it, uh, the sidebar is triggered. If not, it's closed. And that's changed um, for a couple of reasons. But one of the bigger reasons is, um, as I mentioned earlier, this idea of split tabs. So we have the cog for settings, and that's uh, when a block has additional settings uh, that are uh, not per the norm of the styles that are available uh, within WordPress, then you'll have a new settings tab pulled out here. And that's to keep the, the density uh, nice uh, whenever you're editing and it feels, um, it, feels, it feels good instead of having the, everything kind of in your face all at once. And now for other blocks, like the paragraph block, there's not additional settings, so it'll automatically not include it. Um, the tabs up top will just be everything top level. Uh, but when when a third party plugin adds um, an, like a different settings panel, or even if you extend one of these uh, core blocks that does not have one and it detects one, it should be auto added as well. Um, so it's kind of just like a nice fluid way to continue uh, improving the experience of editing within WordPress. Yeah, so plugin authors can also kind of make sure where they want settings and styles to show up that it shows up correctly. And there's a dev note um, about that as well. Yes, that's right. You can you can decide uh, as as when you're extending or adding your own inspector controls. That's what these are called here. Whether or not they're included within styles or settings as well. Yeah. And then another smaller change that's kind of nice is this idea of pulling the outline from its own uh, toolbar item up here into the list view. Uh, it's because they're very relative. You know, a list of all the blocks on your page and also an outline of what's going on. And so they're combined now into this one view. Um, we also have you know, time to read, word count, and character count here, which is nice. And then this is a little guide here that just helps you understand the structure of the importance of the structure of the document um, and making sure that uh, it is properly structured. All right. Was there anything else that we wanted to add, you think, Anne? I'll add one last call out just because I'm trying to think about like little dev uh, tidbits. If you want to disable Openverse, there is a way to disable Openverse as well. I know that's always a concern when we add something. It's like, okay, how do we get rid of it? Because I don't want my client getting into it. Um, there is a way to disable that is documented as well. 
Um, the other thing is the patterns. So there's new categories for the patterns. And um, so query is now post. Um, a couple of things were merged. There's now call to action. Um, and there's also some lovely, which I'm going to brag on Rich again, um, some new text-based query loop patterns. We had a lot of visual patterns um, for the query loop. And now there's some wonderful, more text-focused ones, uh, which I think is really exciting. And just another great way where patterns has evolved. And patterns is obviously a huge part of um, the future of building with WordPress. So um, I'm very excited about those and keen to see um, just more variation with query loop. I think it's a really powerful um, block to make easier to use. So I'm excited to see it. Otherwise, I think that's I think that covers <laughs> a lot of what we were trying to, to go through. Yeah, and, and there's certainly more. <laughs> like there's um yeah. there's a lot of uh like interesting minute details that are you know quality of life improvements around editing and designing. And um we, we can't cover them all today. Um, but it's just there's a lot of exploratory ideas and, and cool, interesting uh, pieces that have been the result of lots of feedback and lots of testing, um, like I mentioned earlier. And um, uh, you know, it's it really a testament to open source and, and contributing and uh, and really um, working together as a team to make this uh, this thing we call WordPress ours and making it um, a, a brilliant publishing experience. So, I just thank you to everyone who's um, put in time, ideas, effort, code, design, marketing, copy, all of that and more um, to making this what it is, um, it, it wouldn't be possible uh, without you. Totally agree. And thank you, Rich, for doing such an excellent job building this site and demoing all this. <laughs> yeah, yes. indeed. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Anne. Um, just to let you know that in theory, there's possibly up to about 25 minutes left. Uh, if anybody wishes to pose a question, we're going to do our best to get them answered directly from uh, Rich and Anne, whether that means putting the screen back on, I don't really know, but we've got a few that have come in. Um, the place to put those, it, it would appear that some people have figured out how to do that in Zoom, but if you go to the uh, walkthrough channel um, in the making WordPress Slack, you can post some questions in there and all things being equal, we'll get them raised as quickly as we can. So we've got a few, I, I, in all honesty, because they've been copy and pasted from various different places, I can't necessarily say who the name of the person is that sent them but um first question i've got over here for either of you it says when you save globally under the advanced tab does this change the style sheet interesting so this will it would change the attributes of the blocks um so if I, so in that example there i pushed the attributes of that one block globally so they're applied to every block um, so it, so it does affect some styles but not um, writing any style sheet or writing to the core style sheets can I ask a question it's not something that's been submitted by anybody else but it just occurred to me that um, as you were clicking the global button I just wondered if there was a get out of, from there in other words if you inadvertently click the global button is there a an undo option in there in other words can you back away from all of the buttons suddenly changing or all of the H1s. You do have to hit save means. after. Yeah. Like you, you can't do, just yes. hit apply globally. You have to hit save and that's where the multi-entity saving pops up. Um, I The multi-entity saving is kind of strange in that it's not good at discarding changes. <laughs> so you right. basically would just have to like leave. Like it would be like, you know, okay, oh, whoops, yeah. I hit that. You could okay. probably also hit the undo. Like there's those are the two yes. kind of options. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, okay. the undo is like a, a global, it, it works there as well, yes. Perfect. And there's a reason okay. that feature is hidden, like under advanced and it collapsed. <laughs> yeah. It's not necessarily for everyone, but for folks who do like to tinker, um, it is available. Right. And it's also only available in the site editor as well. So it's the more, the global view of, of editing your site um, is where mm -hmm. you can access that. Perfect. Okay. So we have a question from Zoom. Is copying and pasting styles as demonstrated just for core blocks they go on to say more which i'll read out some blocks collect some block collections have their own uh c and p and i'm curious what might carry over if anything and then there's a follow-up also if css classes are assigned to a block will applying global styles to a block be to all of the same block i.e h2 or hopefully will a custom class allow for a more granular global css there's a lot in that question but if we just start <laughs> yeah. with the start with the is copying and pasting styles demonstrate just for core blocks so it works for blocks that have leveraged the block support system uh, within core 
So if you have opted your block into using background color um, and text color, link color, any of the layout settings, anything that was in the styles uh, tab, that all of those would get pushed to or get copied or pasted or even pushed to the uh, the global application of styles as well. Um, now, if there's if a block has done its own sort of background color um, attributes, I don't know that those would uh, persist as well. Um, but if you use what's available in core, it's really one or two lines of JSON will get you the background color support that you need. Uh, anything to add to that, Anne? No, just another reason to rely on what core is building. So hmm. I think it's a good, another great example of how these features will work together and how adoption um, helps whenever these new things come out. So. Uh, okay, so we'll go on to the next question then. So this is from Zoom, and apologies, I don't know your name. Um, can we have, <laughs> this is a feature request, can we have a sticky sidebar block for some group's next release, uh, please? <laughs> yeah, it was... Um... do a separate block, I'm guessing. It's just, yeah, Rich, I don't know if you want to chime in on that. Uh, yeah, I would say we, we wouldn't need um, a sticky sidebar block. Um, right now, the group block in top level only does support position sticky. Um, and the only reason it was turned off, like we did have it on for one of the Gutenberg releases for everything, for every group block, but it was turned off just because there was too much confusion around right. um, if you had a sticky element that wasn't, didn't have enough space to stick for you know, different enough height to stick. Um, so it wouldn't actually be sticky and you wouldn't see a result of you applying a sticky um, position to it. Um, so I think we can figure that out with some some UX to really clean that experience up so that you do expect and, and understand what's going on uh, when you apply that to a block that's not uh, at the root level of the document. So it, it'll be there. It's just, it just takes a little bit more iteration. Okay. Okay, another question this time from Slack. Um, when there are changes made in the site editor, are the templates still marked with the blue dot to indicate that the changes are in the database? Yes, uh, from that manage templates view that I shared um, in the canvas, it, it will show up just like it did uh, previously when there are changes to uh, one of the templates provided by the theme. Yeah, and you can revert the changes as well as you as you're used to doing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anne's shared a, a link uh, related to the question that we just posted. I don't know uh, how Zoom works well enough to whether or not we can share that on I the screen. I but... briefly share my screen. Yeah, that'd um, be great. Show us the GitHub. Let me try that. I just wanted to mention this in case people want to follow along in the follow-up oh, tasks related yeah, to perfect. this. I love to look at links. I'm, I'm a nerd like that. So in case anyone else is, this is um, a lot of the follow-up tasks and a great issue to chime in on or just follow if you're interested in this because there are some improvements um, to be made, but this is a, a neat leap forward for now. So it's, um, oh, I just copied and pasted. So it's issue number 47043 in the GitHub repo. I'll just so... stop sharing. 47043 uh, related to the question that we just had. Um, okay, so another one from Zoom. This is Robin who asked the question, can you show, oh, it's just moved on my screen. There we go. Can you show us how to trigger the focus mode to view, say, for example, the footer on its own? So I guess we're back on the screen again. Sure. Everyone can see? Yep. Mm -hmm. So when, when you have a template part selected, you just hit the edit button here and then it's focused into that as well. And then you have the, again, the responsive controls here. Um, all the existing controls is just localized to this template part. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, Robin. Uh, just for anybody who's kind of lurking, who has a question but hasn't yet posted it, please do. Um, what are the chances that you're gonna get Rich and Anne on the, on the phone in the next few weeks? Pretty minimal, I'd say. So make use of them while they're here. Uh, Ellen has done just that. She's in Slack. Ellen says, is there a plan to allow no title templates in the block editor as they are still included even in header and footer only templates? No title templates. Mm. Um, like templates without a title? I'm not quite. Can you just remove the block? You can, yeah, yes, you can remove the post title block from a template. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's if that's what the question's asking. Yeah. Ellen, if you're still in Slack and watching this, if you if you heard Rich and Anne uh, querying that, then if you can give some more clarity, we'll endeavor to get that 
uh, answered. Knowing okay. Ellen, yeah. she knows exactly how to remove things. So I'm like, I'm curious. I, I'm definitely we're misinterpreting something because she's very. Okay. Not showing the title um, in the editor. Not showing, not yeah, showing. not showing the title in the editor. She says she's here. <laughs> I'm like, say more. <laughs> yeah, give us more. Give us more, Ellen, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get right back to you. Let's follow back up on that, because Ellen, Ellen <laughs> yes. always has some good questions and good feedback. Okay. So. All right, we'll do just that. Uh, again, another question from Zoom. This is posed by some anonymous person. Will the list views icon get the same treatment as settings? Hmm. Uh, I don't think oh, there are plans. The... Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think there are plans to change that. The list view icon is is it's um, it's always the list view. So it, when you toggle it on and off, it's relative to what it is. Whereas on the other side, settings um, can be block settings, page settings, template settings, uh, global styles is in that same area. So it's a little bit more context um, for the list view to stay a list view icon. Okay. And I know that question, it came up because the settings icon looks like there's that sidebar. And so there are people who have been asking, like, will the same thing happen over here? Just for context, um, that was part of a discussion in a different GitHub issue. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate very much those people who are posing questions. That's really great. Uh, again, just to prod you once more, feel free to add your own questions in, no matter how big or small they are, we're here to help. Uh, so now we have a question on Zoom from Abdullah. Any good, oh, it coincides beautifully with a question I've written down. Any good resources to learn FSE based th uh, theme based development? Can you either of you point to a particularly good resource that you know of? Yeah, learn WordPress. There's tons yeah. of stuff on learn WordPress that I would recommend. I also, uh, Daisy Olson, who's the developer relations ranker on automatic, has a Twitch stream going and some YouTube videos around. Um, Blockchain development, but I would I would recommend going to to learn WordPress. There's also some contributor led initiatives. Um, Carolina, who's uh, one of the theme folks, has I think it's like fullsighting.com, and that was kind yes. of like the original go to resource. And she's done an incredible job um, working on that, and keeping it up to date. So um, yeah, there's tons of tons of resources. I will <laughs> spare you from from sharing more. I don't know, Rich, you have more hands on experience there. Like, what's what's been most helpful for you? Yeah, there's there's some really great uh, tutorials and guides on uh, Learn that are relatively new that are really helpful. Um, and I see the, the team there has been really cranking it out on the last um, year or two, like really putting a lot of effort into this. So I would I would start there. So if you're not familiar with that, I guess it would be apropos to say, go to your browser of choice and type in learn.wordpress.org and go and explore basically there's a ton of materials that are getting updated on a what feels like a daily basis at the moment so once more learn.wordpress.org go and check that out but also uh Anne in the chat that we've got going on here has linked to daisy olson's twitch channel which i'm just going to read it out but hopefully it'll make it into the transcript twitch.tv forward slash Daisy on wp and it's all as one word d-a-i-s-y-o-n-w-p daisy on WP. So there's two great places to go, but the learn.wordpress.org is perfect. I've got to add one more thing, which is if you're not fully ready for block themes, one of the big things that I feel like needs to be emphasized more is you can gradually adopt. So all these features are being done, but maybe you want to only give access to a client to edit the header. You can do that. Um, maybe you want to use, you want to leverage theme JSON in your classic theme. You can do that. Maybe you want to expose a template editor. Um, <laughs> but use the rest of your theme as a cost thing. You can do that. So I, I want to also encourage folks to look into resources around gradual adoption because it makes sense that this stuff isn't um, from day one. Uh, there has been a, a focus on that of adopt what you what you want when you want. And it's going to make sense to different people at different times. Um, Matthias once said that to me, and I think it rings really true. And so now that we're at this level of maturity, I think looking again and revisiting again, like, okay, what can I use? What do I want to use? Um, I think is is really important to, to mention. So if you're not ready to go all in, I encourage you not to just wipe it all away, um, but to think about how you can gradually adopt and, and also what would help you gradually adopt. So there is actually a label in GitHub um, that was started a couple months ago around, it's called blocks adoption. So if there's something that you see um, that you're trying to gradual adopt the site editor and it's preventing you from doing so like we want to know about that and you're welcome i'm going to just put this out here um at a n n e z a z u is my github username feel free to just like at anzazu <laughs> this is blocking me from using the site editor like we want to know these things um open issues please share um because that is also part of the phase of this work is making sure people can adopt um as they can and that the tools are 
are robust. And there's a ton of resources as well. There's a page in the theme handbook around um, using, you know, gradually adopting to, to block themes. So I just wanted to call that out at like the right time. And just one more time, what was that? Give us the, give us the username. A and E Z A Z U. So like Zazu from like the Lion King, it's an inside joke from middle school. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Possibly the shortest question we'll get. Can Lottie, this is from Sandy, I should say. Um, can Lotties be added to 6.2? Uh, I would say that I did a quick search a few minutes ago, and uh, there are um, various blocks built by the community which do uh, allow you to add or embed uh, Lottie files to your site. I haven't tested any myself, but um, feel free to, to dig into those. And um, if they're open source, they um, you know, can contribute ideas or feedback on, on those GitHub repos. Thank you very much. And uh, Eagle has posted a question. When there are changes made in the site editor, are the templates still marked? Well, did we have that one? Are the template we have, right? We've done that one. Yeah, we answered that one. Yeah, yeah. I think we did. Okay, moving on directly then to Ian. Um, what is, ooh, okay. What is the philosophy for mobile in the editor? Are there any plans to have a mobile view? That's part of the dragging and yeah. resizing. Um, and there's a lot of work being done around intrinsic uh, design. And mm -hmm. you can see on the developer.wordpress.org, oh gosh, dot org, what is the blog? I think it's backslash news. Um, yes. Do you hear audio? I hear only your audio. I don't hear anything I don't wish. Okay, sorry. Wish Something just started no. playing in the background out of nowhere. And that just scared oh, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's like all of a sudden I was like, whoa. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, so we were talking about mobile question. views. And... Sorry, mobile view. Yes, yep. intrinsic design. There is a developer blog that if you're not following that, you definitely should, that addresses this around um, basically showing that the mobile viewpoints have exploded over time. It's now really not sustainable to try and um, have CSS and all this sort of stuff, um, mobile queries aligning for each different view. So instead, how can we think about intrinsic design? And so that's like the best answer I can give. And for now, there is this nice like resizing that you can do to kind of see how things scale. Um, 6.1 introduced fluid typography, which is really exciting and part of this larger intrinsic um, design setup. And I think we'll expect to see more of that over time. Sorry for the brief mental <laughs> break there well, it's always nice to get got some me back music i track. suppose <laughs> yeah yeah um <laughs> just a quick reminder we've probably got five six seven minutes or something like that before we start to wrap things up so if you've got any questions please please do post them in here we have one from paul um who asks is there any more work planned for pattern management in the future and then wp engine has released a plugin allowing easier management of patterns recently yeah, i believe that was yesterday it would be good to know if we should wait for core or assume that nothing else is coming soon yeah i would say that um, pattern management is an important part of this uh, new wordpress experience and and um, having a way to create and manage local patterns, but also maybe push them to the pattern directory. Um, and then on top of that, having a functionality built in where uh, you, it's kind of like a component-based system where you have patterns where yeah, they're, the design is the same across patterns, but content can change. Like all of that kind of falls into the same category of work. And that is something um, I believe WordPress uh, will eventually do as well. Okay, we've got no more, no more questions on the screen, so I'm going to ask a question, if that's all right. You were de demonstrating the distraction-free mode there, where you could move things up, move things down, and resize, and pictures, and images, and so on. I was just wondering what the what the constraints on that are. So in the case of images, I could see that you could resize things, and with the text, I could see that you could you know highlight things and start typing wherever you wish. But I, I just wondered how, how the decisions have been made to set those parameters and those only. So... Yeah, around that. What, what what's available in distraction free mode? What limitations are there? I would say generally, it's uh, what's available is uh, what happens when you click on a block, and uh, mm. what tooling is there available on the canvas uh, before. So resizing was available on the image, but not the toolbar. So the resizing is still available um, when you're in distraction free, uh, but maybe not um, adding the caption piece or you know those other those other toolings. Um, it's almost like the the content locking or content only locking API. It's very similar to that in a sense, uh, but a little bit more tightened up. Um, where just text and dropping in images, you can't necessarily open the media library from there unless you um, dive out of it. 
but you can drop another image onto that existing image to replace it. So things like that. It looks like a really excellent interface for people who just, well, want to concentrate on their writing. It sounds like Anne's all in on it. When I right. use it every exactly. single <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It kind of, it almost felt like a, a Google doc minus all the, the bits and pieces at the top. Yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah. Okay. So we have some more questions. Uh, Weston is asking, what about optimizing the experience of editing using a mobile device? on the web so i guess that's a little bit maybe ah, of the question that we had earlier how can we how can we do things on a actual mobile device Ooh. yeah that's a great question there are um mobile apps so there is the mobile team and using the mobile apps um i personally don't use the mobile apps and sometimes we'll edit things from safari on my iphone se2 um i actually was talking to someone their username is nomad skateboarding and from what i understand he only builds client sites from his phone and so one of the things I said to him is I was like, give us your feedback. That's really wow. cool. It's really unique. That's hmm. fantastic. Like what pain points are you running into? What can we improve? Because there is obviously like we are in a mobile first world. My phone is sitting right next to me. Um, I would love to hear particular pain points folks have when trying to edit in that way. Um, you can obviously use the, the apps. There are some um, quirks with the site editor right now that I know is, is partially being um, looked into and resolved. But um, yeah, I think there are probably what we're building now should always translate back. And there are teams trying to sync back and forth. And there was a recent post from the mobile team talking about what's the future of um, mobile editing. And so I would recommend it's somewhere on Make Core. I recommend digging that up and getting involved and honestly sharing your feedback. Um, Cause I don't think that is an experience that we talk about enough personally. It's a great mm. question. Rich, anything or should we move on? I think that was great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, 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 okay, we have an anonymous Question, it says, as page speed is a big challenge, how are we optimizing the blocks for better um, LCP score? There um, are some interesting, sorry, Rich, I don't know if you want to jump in. I was going to start link dropping. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, there's some interesting work from Andre. Part of it involves like actually adding um, tracking and making sure there's really good front end metrics. So there's kind of a twofer going on where um, in one fell swoop, we're focusing on like better tracking and improving the tracking that we have for performance, um, particularly on the front end. And then at the same time, also work is being done to optimize and to optimize like style sheets. Um, there's been some really neat stuff in previous releases um, that I bet I can pull up. Um, if you'll give me one moment yeah uh, whilst you try to find that and i think it's probably important to say that um if there are any questions which you wish to have answered which don't somehow get answered in the next few moments then there will be posts created around this piece so uh, anything that goes missing any question that is unanswered there will be endeavors to get them answered right okay show us what you got Anne. Yeah, so this was a post I did for 5.9 in conjunction with a whole ton of folks um, who contributed and actually did this work. I just was kind of gathering it up. Um, but you'll see sections here around um, block style sheets and CSS loading. And honestly, a lot of the work with the styles engine, which is part of the Global Styles project, can help um, give a lot of opportunity to actually improve this. Um, I recommend checking out this post to see some of what's already been done. Um, and then in the future, um, one of the discussions that we had recently with some folks um, across the community from Google from Automatic, um, ton up all over the place, um, including our lovely performance lead, Felix. Um, we talked about some of this stuff and about how to talk about particularly themes and also just blocks in general and thinking about some per performance improvements and developer education and automated testing and all sorts of stuff. So I won't go too far into this, but I think a lot of work can be done and um, some of it is being done around measuring more front end metrics. Um, and re very recently, LCP was added um, and started to be tracked um, here, which I think is pretty exciting. So, yeah, I think following the performance team and Felix Ants in particular would possibly get you quite a long way towards your answers there. Yeah. Okay, couple couple more. Uh, firstly, there, there's a few there's a few people helping out in the the Slack channel, so appreciate that we've got Matthias answering questions and so on. So that's really amazing. Thank you. Um, another anonymous question. Any and ooh, any plans plans to support CSS Grid? I think it's something worth exploring. Um, probably not the 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 major priority uh, coming up, but um, definitely some interesting uh, aspects that we've seen other other building applications do that um, that we could learn from for sure. 
Okay, uh, we're very short on time now. I think we've got to round it off at the top of the hour, or top of the hour. So we've got about four minutes left. I've got to wrap it up a little bit. So yeah. try to get these last two done if we can. This is from Mary. What are the typography options as of 6.2? We have Google fonts and self-hosted. Any plans for solutions like Adobe Type and Monotype? There's a fonts API that got booted from uh, 6.2 and is hopefully planned for 6.3. Um, so I would just follow that effort. So right now 6.2 is not introducing anything new or different there. Um, things are as they were, where there's a private API that folks can, can use within theme JSON. That's as Thank concise you. as I can be. <laughs> no, that's perfect. And I think with three minutes to go, that's probably the best time to wrap up the Q&A. Apologies if you had a question and it didn't get answered. As I said, there will be a whole load of things created off the back of this. Um, we will make sure that there's a transcript available and uh, it, I've just read something in the comment. Hopefully any questions that have been asked but unanswered will be answered approaching that. Um, just very, very quickly, I have to say thank you to Anne and Rich in particular for taking the time out of their busy schedules and, and demoing what 6.2 can do. It really looks like a transformational release, but also thanks to Chloe and Jonathan and Lauren and Mary who are on the call, but you know you haven't necessarily seen them right now, so I appreciate them. That's really great. Um, Following up off this, I've got three points to mention. Following the 6.2 release on Make Core for development updates and calls, there's going to be a post. It's make.wordpress.org forward slash core forward slash six dash two. Also, if you've been keeping a close eye on the beta releases, I say beta, I know it's hysterical. <laughs> um, the beta releases, uh, we've got version four, beta four has just been released and anybody who wants to test that out would be most welcome. Uh, the, the URL for that is far too long for me to say out loud, but you can Google it, I'm sure, and find out how to test for that. And also, if you are keen to follow WordPress, it's all over the social networks and you can follow, basically, if you try to just follow at WordPress, then you'll get somewhere. So for example, on, on Twitter, it's WordPress at WordPress on LinkedIn. It's forward slash company forward slash WordPress. Instagram is forward slash WordPress. And guess what? On Facebook, it's forward slash. What do you think it would be? It's WordPress. So, <laughs> so it's available all over there. And I think that's it. I think that's everything that we've got to say. We're about one minute away from closing. So particular thanks to Rich and Anne, but thanks to everybody in the background making all of this happen. Thanks for showing up. If people don't show up, the work never gets done and the project never moves forward. So I fully appreciate anybody who's given up their time to ask questions today and watch this presentation. And thank you, Nathan. I want to call you out as being an excellent moderator. Yes. Creating oh, a safe you? space for us to. Very, to very welcome. I enjoyed doing it. I would uh, I'd gladly do it again. All right. I don't know how <laughs> to end this call, so I'm just going to wave and say <laughs> goodbye. Bye, everyone. Right. Thanks bye for bye. joining. Yeah. <laughs>